What's going on guys, this is Sam, and each and every single year you probably hear the same iPhone controversy pop up. Does Apple intentionally make iPhones slower whenever the new versions come out? So when the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 are announced, do the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6, and the iPhone 6S suddenly get a lot slower than they were just a few days ago? Or does iOS 11 or any new version of iOS intentionally slow down these devices so that you are incentivized to buy the new versions? And every year when I heard this theory, I said there is no way Apple is too too big, too powerful, there's too many eyes on what they're doing to let this slip under the radar. There's no way Apple is intentionally making new versions of iOS really fast for new devices and slower for older devices so that you get frustrated with the old device and then give Apple more of your money. Because that's what it goes down to. It's Apple's taking advantage of the consumer, hypothetically, so that they get more money, that you're unhappy, so you're quote unquote forced to upgrade to the new iPhone for a better experience. And like I said, every year I heard it and I thought it was crazy. But this year it was a little bit different because the narrative didn't end with a few clickbaity headlines as Apple slowing down your device a few different companies actually did some research and the research and the results of that research was fascinating. So at the beginning of October, a company called Futuremark wanted to see if this narrative is really true. Is Apple intentionally slowing down your iOS devices year after year after year? They tested the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6S, and the iPhone 7 on versions of iOS 9, iOS 10, and iOS 11. And the results were kind of crazy. So they tested CPU and GPU performance and as you can see on the charts that they published, performance more or less remained exactly the same year over year for strictly CPU and GPU scores. So looking at these charts right now, it's clear that Apple doesn't intentionally slow down devices because whether you were on iOS 9 on an iPhone 5S or iOS 11 on an iPhone 5S, you can see the GPU and CPU performance once again was roughly the same. Now throughout the months from like April of 2016 all the way up till September of 2017, the scores fluctuated, they changed a little bit along the way, but they were more or less consistent, which not only is good, but what we would expect to see anyway. But at the same time, I've definitely had an experience where I've put a new version of iOS on an older device and things have slowed down. And I wanna read this direct quote from Future Mark's press release on the whole issue because it perfectly illustrates what I think is happening in the background that doesn't really matter if your CPU or GPU score stays the same. Future Mark says, quote, there are some functions that might affect people's perception of performance after updating an older device with a newer version of iOS. An update might add new features that use more resources or require more processing power. New apps developed for the latest models might not run as smoothly on older devices. Conversely, apps designed for an earlier version of iOS might not take full advantage of optimizations in the latest version. And there is always the psychological effect of knowing that there is a new and improved model available which can make your own device seem outdated. When this article came out, that made a lot of sense to me. I said, yes, I knew it was not true. I knew Apple was not intentionally slowing down older iOS devices. It's just because some features might still be in the works. There could be bugs. And maybe you're just thinking your device is slower because a new version's out. That all makes complete sense to me. And I thought that was the end of the story. The narrative is closed. Apple doesn't slow down your device. Stop talking about it, it's not real. But in the past couple of days, there's been some interesting posts on Reddit that have kind of blown my mind and reopened this issue from the beginning of October to now in the middle of December. On the Apple subreddit r slash Apple, this post blew up recently that said, PSA, if your iPhone 6S or if your older iPhone isn't performing well anymore, change the battery and everything will go back to normal like you would expect it to work. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. It's probably an isolated issue. It affected a few people in the community, but not the majority. But the post got upvoted really high, and this caused Geekbench to do some further investigation to see if that was really the case. On December 18th, John Paul of Geekbench did some testing to see if this was true. Does battery performance when your battery isn't holding as much charge as it used to truly degrade the software experience on an iPhone? And he made some graphs, did some comparisons between the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 7, and found that was true. He found that when an iPhone's battery was degraded to some point, let's say it could only hold 20% of what it was initially designed to hold because batteries naturally degrade over time, iPhone performance would go down by a considerable amount. Before moving on any further, it's important to note when this issue first started popping up, which was on iOS 10.2.1 earlier this year on the iPhone 6S. Now, while the official change log only said that there was a performance and bug fix update behind the scenes, Apple implemented a pretty big fix for iPhone 6S users. Apparently, some people were experiencing unexpected shutdowns, and the Geekbench article shows that this is exactly when the slowdowns on degraded batteries started happening. After Apple 
implemented this fix in iOS 10.2.1 quietly, slowdowns started to become apparent, and performance was degraded when you had a degraded battery. What's really crazy is that this issue is no longer limited to the iPhone 6S. In this Geekbench article, it also shows that an iPhone 7 on iOS 11.2 is behaving in the same manner. When it has a degraded battery, the performance is not like it should be. This is a really big find because Apple doesn't notify you in any other way in the current version of iOS 11 that your performance is being reduced because you have a bad battery. They're just reducing your performance and not telling you why. And once again, I want to go to a direct quote from the Geekbench article. John says, quote, I believe, as do others, that Apple introduced a change to limit performance when battery condition decreases past a certain point. If the sudden performance drop is due to the sudden shutdown fix, users will experience reduced performance without notification. Users expect either full performance or reduced performance with the notification that their phone is in low power mode. This fix, and he's referring to this fix as your iPhone's performance slowing down when the battery gets degraded past some point. Uh, resuming the quote again, this fix creates a third unexpected state. While this state is created to mask a deficiency in battery power, users may believe that the slowdown is due to CPU performance instead of battery performance, which is triggering an Apple-introduced CPU slowdown. This fix will also cause users to think, and this is the best quote from the entire thing, my phone is slow, so I should replace it. Not my phone is slow, so I should replace its battery. That is a really good quote. When users see the performance is getting worse, my first thought is, oh, the CPU's old or I need to get a new iPhone, which kind of plays into the plan obsolescence theory that Apple slows down phones to make you buy the new version. I think the biggest problem here is that Apple has not been transparent as to what's going on. Suddenly, between iOS versions, all of a sudden, they can modulate your performance when your battery condition degrades past some point or decreases past some point but they don't tell you that. They don't say that, hey, your performance is really bad and we're doing that to let you know that your battery isn't holding a charge like it used to. They're just slowing down your performance with absolutely no explanation, which arguably would be slowing down your phone so that you buy a new version. Now, I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if that's the plan. Apple has not yet really commented on what's been going on. But this is Geekbench, this is an official test. FutureMark ran some testing and showed that in general, the performance stays the same across iOS devices. But something funny could be going on between older devices that obviously would have older batteries and slower performance. I wanna hear your thoughts on this down below in the comment section. Do you think this is a big issue that needs to be talked about more? I held off in making the video when FutureMark first released their results because there was really nothing to report other than like, no, they're not doing it. And I tied that into this video at the beginning because I wanted to show you that that was what I was initially thinking. But all of a sudden, this article came out, we saw that Reddit post, and Apple is slowing down performance, CPU performance, when your battery condition goes down past a certain point. It's really interesting stuff. Once again, let me know what you're thinking about all this down below in the comments section. Anyway, that's gonna wrap up this video. Crazy stuff. If you enjoyed watching, it does help me out if you take just one second to drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe for more videos on future Apple controversies. And if you would like to help support me and the channel, head over to iUpdateOS.com slash merch, buy a t-shirt or a hoodie, and I'd really appreciate it. I've been Sam, I hope all of you are doing great, and I'll talk to you in my next video.